Thank you, sir. I wonder if you could stand to your feet, lift your hands high, and say, let it rain, Lord, on the inside. Come on, pour it out upon me today. I wonder if somebody could exemplify your heart today. Come on, that's it. Could you put your, could you put your heart in your hands and lift it high? Could you lift your voice unto the Lord? Say, Lord, the one thing that I've desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house. Habir Havonai in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a wave off and a praise today. Come on, that's it, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want this church to seem like a terrible army with banners. Hallelujah. We've got the identity of praise. We got the identity of worship. Oh, somebody say, whoa. Hey, Amen. Look at your neighbor. Tell him it's happening in the house right now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Clint. Thank you, choir. My, that's just awesome. One of my favorite choirs right there. Praise team, musicianship. Amen. Thanks for your help all week long today, uh, which is still fixing to be displayed. Amen. We are just, how many are happy in the house? There's not just sunshine, finally, on the outside, but there's sunshine on the inside. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated if you feel. My, we are just uh, just thrilled, thankful for what God's doing. We don't want to crank it down in any way, but help us sing this song that says, He's all I need. I believe you know the song. We sang it here before. Help us, help Sister Nola Kanai on Sunday morning verse, uh, voices. Amen with, with, with all of these words and melody today. I want you to take it home with you. He's all in name. Praise.
Hallelujah. Come on, I'm going to be thankful. <laughs> He's my water when I'm thirsty. He's my shelter in the time of storm. Amen. He's my lily of the valley. And at the same time, the bright and the morning star. Lean over to your neighbor. Tell him he's all I'll ever need today. He's all I need today. Praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody clap a little bit longer under the Lord. I love him. <laughs> I'm so thankful. And I don't know if I can voice it. Uh, amen. Or with articulation. This morning I thank the Lord for those seminars. and Marriage seminars. And. The opportunity to speak our heart, his word, to so many great, great people, so many great marriages. Uh, amen. Just what a privilege it was to just interact and have a good time. Hallelujah. Sharing the word, crying a little, laughing a little. Amen. But I am ever so much more grateful out of all of the almost 32 years with Sister Nalo can thank God for heaven's harmony and Amen. The matchmaker in heaven knows how to do it. But above and beyond that is the 40 plus years that the Lord has allowed me to love him. Hallelujah. And I trace the trail, amen, of all the things that, amen, he's brought me through, picked me up, put me upon, amen, held my hand, the one set of footprints on and on I could go. But there's nothing like monitoring, taking inventory, thanking God for the relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to be thankful that you get to serve. Not I have to, I get to serve Him with all of my heart, soul, strength, and mind. I don't have to come to this house today. Come on, I get to come to higher praise and praise Him in a higher way. Ooh, how many just love Him today? Thank you, Jesus. And I, I know this is picking it up just a little bit again. Isn't that just the way it is in a Pentecostal church? Hallelujah. This is a song we may have sang here before. Uh, amen. It's a self-written song. It's on one of the classics out there. Uh, amen. But the song says, it's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. Hallelujah. It was at Prairie Creek, Indiana. You don't even know where that is. I barely do. We were there 18 years as a home base, traveling, amen, as a launching pad. Just a little home, little bungalow house in a city of about 300 people. Amen. And I just put my feet on the floor one day and this melody hit my heart. Amen. And these words, it's not by might, nor by power. Amen. Let's, let's thank God and praise the Lord with the prophet. Help us sing it today. But it's by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless the blesser. I've got that Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, how many have that Holy Ghost and fire? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He's equipped us. Amen. Breastplate of righteousness, sword of the Spirit, helmet of salvation. And when the loins go about with truth, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel from head to toe. Amen. I'm armed. Look out. We're locked and ready. Praise God. Somebody say yes. Oh, anybody with me? Way back there. Shout yes. Woo. Hallelujah. Please, if you could stand to your feet. Amen. Today in the house of the Lord. Amen. I appreciate it. This is a music and singing church. Wow. Thank you for letting us play just a little bit of Git Fiddle. Amen. With this fine band and, uh, and wonderful singers. We honor all those, amen, also that are not able to be here this morning. I know there's a group of saints of the Lord that had went on the Apostolic Sea Sea Cruise. Uh, amen. Some are probably traveling. Some are already maybe flowing over. Uh, amen. Brother and Sister Morrell, we just appreciate them so very, very much. We got to spend a lot, a lot of time with them in the past week here, uh, fellowshipping, amen, and uh, just that good old Pentecostal eating at the same time you're talking kind of thing, amen, and uh, they just tread, uh, treated us so royally, and uh, we love your pastor, his precious wife, and family, and this church. How many love your men of God, your pastor, amen, praise God, hold them high in prayer, love them and pray for them every day. Hallelujah. And uh, I, I have learned over the years that if I was uh, ever in question of my man of God, I'd just go to the Lord. Amen. And uh, the Lord would just straighten it out, straighten me out. Whatever it was, whatever was necessary. Amen. He made a way out of a way. And I appreciate all the pastor that I've had in the past. One was a missionary eventually to Norway, Sweden. Amen. And one, another one still pastor. Another one is close to his 90s. Uh, it's my wife's uncle when I moved down to Indiana. He's not pastoring anymore, but my, I honor him. I honor all the men of God. I, as an evangelist, amen, I still do have a pastor. Uh, amen. Brother Larry Reed is my pastor uh, in Mississippi. He's not pastoring, but he's still my pastor. Amen. I've got a board of directors. Brother Nolak needs that accountability, and I thank God the Blue Zion Ministries has that kind of board. Uh, amen. And we appreciate it. Hallelujah. So love your man of God. Love what's happening. I know you do. My, amen. There's just, what a wonderful group of people here today in the saints of God. And we're not taking turns up here, so you might as well feel it out there like I feel it up here. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to help us preach just a little bit today. That's about half of you. How about the rest? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Appreciate my wife. I thank God for her. Uh, and, uh, you know, just even teaching a marriage seminar just uh, re-reminds you, if I could say, uh, uh, once again, of, of the gem that is, God has given me. And I appreciate that. So, so can you say something for the Lord in that macrophone? Uh, amen. Could you testify a little bit? How many want to hear Sister Nola testify a little bit? Amen. Three people. Praise God. Come on. Hallelujah. Testify, Sister. Praise God. I'm not much for speaking, but I just thank the Lord today for his many blessings, for his protecting hand. He's so very good to me. I can never... I could stay here all day and just yes, tell, yes. try to tell you everything he's done, but I just couldn't finish it because he is so good yes. to me, and I'm so thankful. Praise the Lord. I'm really glad we've got a good God. Hallelujah. CD's still in the vestment. Anybody interested, uh, feel free. Other than what Brother Micah, the evangelist Micah Narlock has, uh, amen, that is the last of what we have before we need to reorder. We're down to the bottom of the barrel. We've been trying to do that. We're going to do that. So, uh, and uh, but if for some reason there's none left, or what happens, we can send you the first one we get. Uh, but uh, so they're still there. Uh, it may be saturated, but God bless you for just taking a peek at that anyway. Pray, pray for Blue Zion Ministries. We do have a website, bluezionministries.com, if you want to check that out from time to time. Uh, amen. And we ask for your prayers. Uh, draw a little sketch of Brother and Sister Nalak and put it on your fridge. Every time you open it up, you get your milk. Amen. You're, you're praying for BZM. Hallelujah. So thank you so much. We will be praying for you. Thank you, Brother Clint. I appreciate your friendship. Thank you for all you do in the house of the Lord. Those that have helped. My what talent. How many appreciate this precious brother, his family? Amen. Thank you for all you do. Praise God. And just, just a delight to work with you, sir, in your spirit. We're looking forward to Israel as well. Hallelujah. I don't think we're going to stay very quiet on that bus. 
Amen. And uh, we're just going to have a great, great time. It's going to turn into a singing bus. It usually does. Our tour guide begins to sing along with us. He's singing apostolic songs by the time he's done. <laughs> Hallelujah. How am I going to help us preach? Amen. Hone in with me. I know I've had you stand for a long time. I could go on. Thank you for who you are. The youth group, everyone, department heads, Sunday school teachers, youth leader, brother Rowe, on and on and on. God bless you. Some men, some mine. Sister Screen that has helped us with media so very much. Thank you for allowing God with your professionalism. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord good in this house? Hallelujah. Turn into two scriptures, 2 Chronicles 13 and 5. 2 Chronicles 13 and 5. And then there's Numbers 18 and verse 19 I want to go to today. 2 Chronicles 13, 5. Wow, I feel the Holy Ghost and fire here. Praise the Lord. Amen. 2 Chronicles 13 and 5. Praise the Lord. And then I want to uh, go to Numbers 18 and 19 but 13 and 5 says it this way ought ye not to know that the lord god of israel gave the kingdom over israel to david forever even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt don't you know says the writer amen a covenant of salt somebody say a covenant of salt I want to, if I could, go to Numbers chapter 18, amen, and verse number 19. Repetitive as it may be, I know this is chronologically maybe in reverse, but Numbers 18 and 19 says, All the heave offerings of the holy things, Kodesh, which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord, have I given thee and thy sons and thy daughters, Ben and Bat, with thee, by a statute, somebody say forever. It is a covenant of salt, somebody say forever. Before the Lord and unto thee and to thy seed with thee. Somebody say covenant of salt. This may be redundant to some within your studies. May have heard preachers touch on it before. Maybe we even have alluded to it in a way in the past. <clears throat> but I want to, if I could preach and reach in your hearing just for a little bit amen that there is faith in the salt factor faith in the salt factor could you say that with me faith in the salt factor one more time faith in the salt factor could you take that bible harness it to your heart with one hand could you lift another hand amen where you are let's pray amen thank you father we have come to magnify your name exalt your name together thank you for every heart and soul that is gathered here god we can't conjure something up we can't spice it up we can't hype it up we need your presence in the house we need you to come lord and center to circumference saturate our souls amen you're welcome in your own house we give you a personal invitation in your own house amen it's yours lord we give you the praise help our hearts to be receptive help our minds god to be collective we pray for laser faith focus right now in the name of jesus we pray somebody say in jesus name Oh, could you swiftly put that Bible next to you on the pew? Could you clap your hands unto the Lord one more time? Come on, once again, all hail King Jesus. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Oh, somebody shout yes. Look to your neighbor, tell him I'm going to help that preacher preach. Even when the cat's away, I pray the mice don't play. How am I going to help us preach? Hallelujah. Clap your hands one more time. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated if you feel. Oh, lean over to your neighbor right now and tell him while I'm sitting here, if you can't take my worship, amen, you're allowed to move at any time. Praise God. Because I plan on worshiping him. Amen. <laughs> There's no apology, brother, to when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of us. But I was denoted as one of the radicals when I was a teenager, amen, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18 years old. They had to look out when Brother Nala went from the, uh, amen, the choir. I almost hit a speaker one time, flying through the air. Brother, I remember, amen, 
I even bloodied a brother's nose. Amen. Because they stepped under the aisle at the wrong time. Look out. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Anybody with me in section A over here? Praise the Lord. But I, I, I feel Holy Ghost in the house. And where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. And so I want to claim his promises. <laughs> Amen. I want to get under the spout where the glory comes out. Amen. I want to douse myself in the waterfall of his presence. Amen. Look with me, and I don't want to bore you with historicity. <clears throat> Amen. I don't want to uh, chronologicalize you today with all kinds of B.C. and A.D., but I, I want somebody to catch the vision, amen, of a, of a little bit, uh, a, a covenantal foundation, if you please. Amen. We must build it, brother, concerning the covenants within the word of the Lord. As I was telling those at the marriage seminar, I may have even mentioned it here, I think in another service or so, uh, this last week or this week, how that even at Corinth, you could see Aquila and Priscilla's, probably one of their shops or something like it. And the background was the temple of Apollo in the old city of Corinth. And it was a diametrically uh, opposition spiritual situation to there were those that were saved and entrepreneurs, amen, that were righteous and holy, let, yet they seen the pilgrims from everywhere of the then known world were to come and worship at this place called Apollo. <laughs> and my mind, brother, began to, again, establish within its framework the tenacity that they must have had to do the things that they did, the passion that they must have exploited, amen, to go up to the places they went up to. They must have believed in their little gods with small g's in some way. They must have had some kind of faith and trust that whatever it was they were trusted in would deliver them in the hour of their fine-tuned tribulation. <clears throat> Brother, I didn't mention, but let me mention, amen, here and now, that one of the places we did go to <clears throat> wasn't particularly on schedule, amen, but we fitted in, was a place called Delphi. Anybody ever heard of Delphi in Greece? Delphi, brother, <clears throat> pardon me, is, uh, again, a place of antiquity, but, brother, we had to drive. Thank the Lord it was a small car with good gas mileage. And amen, four guys in some kind of little compact car, but it was good in, in the long haul, in the long run. And amen, we had to drive and sometimes scissor back and hairpin turn and continue to go on and on and on. And where are we going? And finally, <clears throat> we went up to this place called Delphi. They had a nice museum there. They had some good coffee. Amen. Even a little snack bar or restaurant if you wanted. Boy, after that journey, you, you really needed it. We begin to walk again, brother, through the arch and the gate and see the places of archaeological ruin and antiquity. And finally, amen, after walking a long way, we came again to another temple of like Apollo. But from what I understood, brother, this was the very temple, amen, to where there would be some lady sitting over some kind of pit. The reason that they had built so high on the mountain, somebody in the past must have discovered, amen, this place where the earth exhumed toxic fumes that we would call, but in their day it would be as if it was something mystical, something mysterious. So they built upon this in the temple, Usually it was women, you could say witches of yesterday, <clears throat> that would sit above these pits as you could say gorilla glue, amen, fumes would catch their nostrils and they would begin to prophesy to those that had come for a message and a word. Apollo simply means, brother, music, light, uh, amen. Uh, 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 those that would be like the dreamers in mysticism, uh, it, it, was, it was something positive in their day. So if somebody was hungry for some kind of prophecy or interpretation to their dream, they needed a little light, they needed an oracle or a prophecy, amen, they would go to this place and get their interpretation from a woman who sat over a pit of superglow. This was the same parallel that Paul in the book of Acts was confronted with as some lady, the Bible says, with divination. 
amen, that would begin to say, these are the men of the Most High God. These are the men of the Most High God. Sounds like free advertisement, amen. A walking billboard for three days behind you. These guys have the truth. Amen. But something hit his spirit, brother. Maybe he could have cast it out earlier. The Bible says it's divination. Look that up. That means python. Python. It was a snake in the grass. Paul didn't need that kind of, amen, advertisement. Amen. Or fake news. Amen. He needed something that was real and righteous. So he went on, brother, and cast out that devil. Amen. I'm, I'm here to tell you, saints, there was the connection because this Apollo at Delphi had, as if it were, tributaries or others that would do the same thing like a mobile pit lady giving oracle or prophecies across the land. Amen. Brother, I, I, I want to say today, brother, with the covenant that we have, with repenting of our sins, amen, and our sins washed away in the watery grave of baptism, amen, and receiving the Holy Ghost, but the evidence is speaking in other tongues. We don't have to sit over some pit, amen, smelling gorilla glue to get an oracle light on music. We can come to a Pentecostal church, amen, and lift our hands, get out in the aisle and love God, and watch God turn lives inside out and upside down. Oh, come on, somebody. We didn't even have to climb a mountain today. We've come to praise him. We've come to magnify him. I get to come on a comfortable Pentecostal pew with a speaker system and music that's out of this world. Amen. And love him with all of my heart, soul, strength, and mind. Woo! I thank God for what we have. How many are thankful for what you have? Brother, I never, never, never want to take it for granted of what I feel here, of what I understand in a Pentecostal church. Mind you, brother, when we were evangelized for 22 years before we pastored, I recognized the fight in the night. I recognized the joys and the victories. And the Lord pulled us off of that, and we pastored for seven and a half years. Amen. Again, the fight in the night, the joys and the victories. And then the Lord decided to put us back out on the road. Amen. When we should have and maybe enjoying the nice uh, nest egg somewhere. Amen. <laughs> but brother, I wasn't disobedient to the heavenly vision. When God says go, you got to go. Oh yeah, somebody say yeah. No roses for me. I know you're doing things out of your comfort zone as well. But hear this preacher. I say all that to say this, that when we went back on the road this time, Seven years later, it was like walking on to a different planet. The Americas we live in, amen, the world that we are spinning on has changed dramatically in the last seven, eight, nine years. I had to re-get used to all over again what is happening in the spiritual realm, amen, in these good old United States. How many are here in this preacher? I never want to take for granted what's happening right here, right now. I said all that to say this, brother, I have felt this passion, this, this, this uh, love for a Pentecostal service like I've never had in a long, long time. Amen. You can keep your TV preachers. You can keep, amen, your, your computer dunderheads. Amen. Whatever you want to do. But there's something about coming to the house of God and loving the Lord with my brothers and my sisters and thanking God for solid, rock solid preaching in these last days. Ooh, altar calls and watch people being born again and music to praise God and the council of Levi letting it go with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Somebody say yes. Look at your neighbor say, I'm glad where I am right now. Oh yeah. And I said all of that. But you see, to get this. Says so never underestimate where you are, who you are, and what you're doing right now. It's not by accident that you're here today. It's not by accident that God has moved you up another ladder and the ladder to the faith and the truth and your very journey in Jesus. And brother, so I say that even in times that we call, we have covenants, the covenant of the cross, etc. Back then there were particular covenants. Salt was one of the covenants, but I want to explain just a little if I could. How many still with the preacher? 
Look at your neighbor. Say, he's going to explain something this afternoon. Stick with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, watch this. Watch this. And so, brother, one of the covenants, amen, that is there within the scriptures that we think, my, that just happened on the day of Pentecost. Not necessarily. Amen, brother. They would take in a cleansing bath. Even John the baptizer, amen, was doing this. Others were doing this. I have heard in antiquity, brother, when they wanted to cleanse somebody, they would literally put their hands on them as they would go down and willingly into the water by immersion. And whoever was baptizing them would put pressure on the top of the head as if the person on the inside of the water was struggling to come up as if it were breaching or a literal birthing process at the same time. We call it baptism in Jesus' name, brother. But they've used this for thousands of years. The Jews have used this. If somebody wanted to be converted to Judaism, amen, back in the time of Old Testament, amen, if somebody wanted to join the Jews, the tribes, they would have to go through a cleansing bath called a mikvah. Anybody have heard of the term? A mikvah. When you visit, amen, the south part of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, which some of you will see, amen, did you know, saints, that on the south side they have discovered through the spade and digging through dirt and dusting and air compressors and you name it, amen, they've discovered an numerous amount of mikvahs which are cleansing baths. Brother, they would go down on one side of the steps into the water and bury themselves in the water. Then they would turn around and come up on the other side and then cleansed and washed. No wonder the apostles didn't have a hard time baptizing or mikvahing, amen, 3,000 people on the first day because there were plenty of bathtubs. Hallelujah. <laughs> and they could all come up and begin to speak in another tongue. Saints, we don't do this just because it's some kind, uh, amen, of paragraph in our liturgy. It's not something traditionally, amen, that we've done just because, amen, grandma used to cut off the other sides of the, of the ham just to put it in the pan and the oven. How many know what I'm saying? We do, what we're doing here, amen, is over 3,000 years old when you go down in the watery grave. But the difference is as we come up in the name of Jesus Christ. We go down in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, our sins are gone. Woo! <laughs> Amen. You must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Now, I don't want to stop there. There are other little kinds of covenants. You've got to realize that what we're doing here today has a longevity, a heritage, a lineage to it. You're not disconnected to the 66 books as a whole. Hallelujah. Something's taking place. Could I preach on? Amen. Is this all right? Section B. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Anybody else with me? Hallelujah. Can I say it this way, brother? Even in the Song of Solomon, this ain't a marriage retreat. Amen. But in the Song of Solomon, I mentioned it just a little. Amen. It was the shepherd lover that she fell in love with. Amen. And she had this espousing, brother, as it were, that that, that I am yours and you are mine under where the apple tree and the apple tree. Now, the Bible calls it apple. That's the KJV writers. They wrote apple. But apples are not indigenous to where the scripture was written. So most likely, and some have thought out and sought out, it would be called the kitchalika tree. <laughs> Anybody have a kitchalika this morning for breakfast? Well, I mean, the kitchalika tree is the size of a grapefruit or so in the Middle East. And it is very aromatic and smells beautiful, tastes great. It's the kitchalika tree. It's more indigenous, and most likely it was that. And brother, they would, they would, as if it were, be, be opposite of each other, under, and she would be wearing a veil. Some of you wonder where the veil thing come from. It's Middle Eastern. A lot of what we do is comes from the East. I mean, your Judeo-Christian ideas, I mean, coming from the Middle East and Israel. So the veil was on. And she would cup her hands, and he would come with ten coins, like a coat of arms, on one side or the other. Now, I know you didn't do this at your wedding, amen, at least not quite that way. But they would simply, he would drop the coins into her hand by way of trust. This is the coat of arms. This is the family name. We are to be one. You are my bride. Hallelujah. <laughs> And then, brother, it was the amount of 10 coins 
altogether. How many know 10 means completion in the scripture? Hallelujah. 10 coins. Simply, brother, sages say that when she collected those coins, when they were on their knees apart from each other, amen, and she was receiving those coins or tokens, that even if she didn't love that man, sages say that the love for that fella was kindled in her heart at that very moment. She might have thought he was a jerk before, but right then and there, <laughs> he's the best in the West. Anybody with me now? Oh, yeah. Where are you going with this, Brother Nolak? Amen. That's covenantal. Something happening there. This marriage and vows under the kitchen tree. A lot of things that we do today is what I'm trying to say, brother, amen, happens from a long lineage of covenants of the past, like baptism in Jesus' name. It didn't stop there, brother, in antiquity. Even Jesus referred to it, I believe, with the lady that's sweeping the house, come find the coin, amen, that I'm missing. They would sew those ten coins into their veil and their celebration. And then after that, they would take them off and put them into a safe place. If one coin was missing, the husband, if he found out there was only nine there, could question her virtue toward him. No wonder she was frantically trying to find that one coin somewhere. Help me sweep the house. Move the buffet. Move, amen, the sink. Find it in the cracks of the tile. And then after, brother, she was as if it were black with dust. Woo! Come rejoice with me for I found the coin that I was missing. Hallelujah. Brother, I, I, I want to say simply when Jesus comes and returns, I want to make sure I've got a complete value system that he can identify with, that I can identify with. I belong to him. I met him under the tree 40 years ago. Oh, somebody clap your hands under the Lord. Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, we've got time for this. Hang on. What are you saying, preacher? Hey, Amen. Those, that's really not what I want to preach today. Those are just, I just wanted to show you the covenantal connection from the past to now. And how that through even watery graves, covenantal coins. Amen. The long lineage of what a covenant means to us. Contracts can be broken. You can sign the piece of paper and it's just a contract. It's just a piece of paper. Marriage con contracts to the world today. Just a piece of paper. Really? Hey Amen. A hundred dollar bill is a piece of paper, but I ain't going to give those away that fast. It takes work to get that hundred. It takes work to get that marriage right. Mm. Hallelujah. Anybody stay with the preacher? I feel a 60% loss here in just a <laughs> Amen. Amen. Covenants matter. You can't just break a covenant. It's real. The Bible said forever. So then I preach to you what I've been trying to get across this morning. The highest covenant in the East, consider, brother, is the covenant of salt. It's the highest one. As a matter of fact, when those two, brother, were kneeling, amen, toward each other, and not, not in a nasty way, but they would stick their tongues out one at a time, and they would sprinkle salt on top of that tongue. Amen. One to each other. Because you couldn't break a salt pact without it pending upon the death of the other. Something would happen. Amen. Whew, where are you going, preacher? Can, can I just explain it this way? Can I read something, brother, real quick? Amen. How many are still with the preacher? Praise God. I might need a glasses retriever in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So look at your neighbor. Help him now. Say, help him now. Watch this, somebody. Amen. From what I understand, brother, this was a covenant of salt in the east. The taking of a salt is a pledge, a promise of fidelity. If I come to your house and eat with you food which has been seasoned with salt, I can never betray you or do you harm. Even if you commit a crime and I'm asked to testify, I cannot do it because I've eaten your salt. I can't do it. Amen. In fact, the penalty for doing so is death in the Eastern customs. 
Haman salt was the highest of covenants. But as a matter of fact, in other words, if there was somebody in the desert, amen, and they pitched a tent there and they were comfortably warming themselves by their TP fire or whatever it was, and somebody came knocking on the tent flap and said, it's cold out here in the desert. The temperatures, amen, have plunged. I need a safe haven. There's jackals and wolves out there. He would say, come on in. Amen. He would feed him. Amen, what he had. And most likely, brother, it was staples that were preserved by salt. And he would eat his camel jerky with, <laughs> with salt on it. And, brother, he understood that I am to protect you upon pain of death. In other words, because you've eaten my salt. Anybody ever heard of that phrase, he's not worth his salt? Oh, that's just little salt. Brother, those salt things, amen, come from a long lineage of understanding that they're very covenantal. Brother, from what I understand, amen, no wonder a lot, when they were beating on his door, <laughs> we want the strangers on the inside. He was willing to give, in the culture of that day, his daughters, please, but don't touch the strangers. Why? Because they entered his house. And when you enter the house, it meant I'll protect you upon pain of death in those days. Lot was obliged to protect those strangers in his own house. Wow, something's happening there, saints. It's, it's this salt covenant idea. As a matter of fact, who dipped the sop, him in the bread in the sop with Jesus, was Judas. Judas was in the position of honor, but he dipped the sop, and the Bible says he betrayed the Lord. The sop contained what? Salt. Whew. Amen. And Judas ended up in the garden kissing the door of heaven on his way to hell. Judas killed himself, but if he didn't, somebody was obliged to kill him because he broke the salt pact with the Messiah. He had to die. How I many you know what I'm saying? This is the custom of the past. <laughs> Aren't you glad that you can still have salt and somebody else does and it's okay today? Ooh, look at your neighbor and say, please pass the salt. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? Amen. These were the customs of yesterday. So, so if I could, fasten your seatbelts, get your crash helmet on. I want to explain something to you, brother. Go judges. Judges, if you will, chapter number four. Amen. Brother Clint's going to preach with me a little bit. Somebody give me a denominal nod and say, yeah, hallelujah. Woo. Amen. You, you've got to see this. Amen, brother. Judges chapter, uh, let's see, number four. And then I want you to start with verse number 17. Verse number 17. How many still with the preacher? Don't, don't. Amen. Stick with me. Watch this. Hallelujah. I'm not going to preach real, real long. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Verse number 17. How be it, Sisera fled <laughs> away on his feet to the tent of Jael. Sisera, so yeah, Sisera fled away on his feet. Amen, to the tent of jail. How many remember jail? Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. The wife of Heber, yeah. the Kenite. Yeah, go ahead. For there was peace between Jabin, the oh. king of Hazor. Come on. And the house of Heber, the Kenite. Yeah, now peace. In other words, Jael wasn't biased toward the army of Israel or from Sisera in his army. Amen. Her self and his, uh, her wife, they were neutral in the battle. They were just out there with their tent. Now, I, c c c brother, hold that place. I'm going to back up just a little bit. This is the time of Judges. This is before the king of Saul. This is before the king David, Solomon, etc. Amen. These are when judges helped judge the land. Amen. And so Barak and Deborah are in this picture. Deborah, amen, the Bible specifically says she's under the tree. <laughs> amen. And she is going to uh, get a word from the Lord. And so the Canaanites and Sisera, this leader of this pact, are going to come against the children of Israel. They've been bothered for a long, long time. Now, these are the judges like uh, those. How many remember Shamgar? 
He killed 600 Philistines with an ox goat because they're picking on the pea patches of Israel. They're an agricultural people. You don't mess with my garden. <laughs> so can you imagine doing away with 600 people with your hoe in the garden? Watch out. I've got my flower planter. Hallelujah. Boom, 600 are down. <laughs> These were men, brother, and ladies that judged, amen, like Gideon that you've talked about, and on and on. These, <laughs> these are judges. So Deborah gets this message that Barak is supposed to go fight Sisera. Well, Barak is not so inclined because Sisera has 900 chariots. Big deal. No, 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 no. Chariots were the tanks of yesterday. Brother, I, I looked at in, in Israel when we were uh, just having a great time. Our bus came to a screeching halt. Dust was flying. We were in the Golan Heights. Amen. Our IDF, Lieutenant Colonel, <laughs> a tour guide popped off and went to a tank depot to talk with them if we could come visit it. Sure enough. Amen. We parked the bus and we walked about a quarter mile just to get to a tank depot and we touched Israeli tanks and talked to one of the drivers. It was a wonderful time. You know what they call their tanks there? They call them Merkava. How many know what Merkava is? It means chariot. <laughs> They're a little more modern. Amen. How many know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, they're chariots. 900 chariots. No wonder Barak was going to have a conniption fit. I ain't going, Debbie. Sister, I ain't going, Sister Debbie, unless you come with me. I don't know. Call him a sissy. Call him a coward. I don't know. Can you handle that? And she said, yeah, I'll go. Amen. In the battle, I'll go with you in this thing. But there's going to be a woman that's going to receive the glory for this battle at the end of it. He says, no problem. I mean, with me. <laughs> I know I'm going through a lot of explanation. You're not climbing the wall, but stick with me. Somebody say, I'm with you, preacher. And then, brother, they go into this battle. Amen. 900 chariots. 1,800 wheels. They're on Mount Tabor. Guess where they're going to fight the battle? They're going to fight the battle in what we would call the Valley of Jezreel or Armageddon. Go there with us. I'll show you. It's flat land, perfect for war chariot battles. <laughs> Brother, it's Megiddo is a city that has no less than 20 layers of civilization. Why? Because it was a watched post city for the crossroads of two major highways in antiquity and now. And anybody that wanted to hold the position needed that point. No wonder I feel in end time this valley is going to be a staging point for end time battle of Armageddon. And it's not just going to be people, but hyper demonically induced people. Devils and demons, some from Tartarus, as it were, if not all, that are going to be loosed. And Jesus is just going to give them free reign. Go ahead, see what y'all can do. But I fought the battle 2,000 years ago with both hands tied behind my back, and I won. Whoa. <laughs> Somebody say yes. This is that valley, and the tanks are poised, and Barrow's going, <laughs> And so, brother, they climb up this Mount Tabor. It's like the top of an ice cream cone in the middle of the valley. It's cool. Look it up, Tabor. And he's up there with 10,000 men. Hey, man, and they're ready. And at the sound, bam, I'm getting with you, brother. Just hang on. Is that all right? Oh, thank you, sir. Watch this. <laughs> hey, man, they run down in a rush by faith. You're not going to make it against 900 chariots. No way. But the Bible says, I could go through all this with Scripture, but the Bible says he discomfited them. That simply means he sent cumulus, clouds, thunder, lightning, rain, flood. Every creek and river in that valley <laughs> amen, flooded. It, I don't know. It could have been a foot deep. could have been amen, a half a foot deep. But everywhere, it was like a little lake of water, discomfited. Look it up. Amen. Yah sent a storm. But guess what happens to heavy, heavy chariots on the soft floor bed of a valley? They begin to sink. 
and become useless. <laughs> Mud brother, so thick, you so so thick you could suck the socks off of a frog. Oh, the brother, it was thick. All of a sudden, they come to a screeching halt. Bam! And all of these charioteers that trusted, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But Barak said, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. <laughs> Somebody say, I trust him in the middle of a battle. But all of a sudden, amen, Barak's army comes rushing down and they're fleeing for their lives because that which they put faith in has failed them. And they're running for the lives. The swords clashed. The sparks flew. And then the smell of gunpowder and smoke, as it were, filled the valley floor. And by the end it was done. Every one of the enemy that oppressed Israel, amen, had been vanquished. Except for Sisera. Sisera turned sissy. And started running for his life. This is where we pick up. Right here. Brother, you were re reading it. He's got lightning in his retinas. <laughs> He's got the sound of thunder and boom, bang in the deep recesses of his eardrums. He's, he's looking at the apocalyptic battle. My army is dead. My chariots are vanquished. I'm over. And he's running for his life. Anybody ever been there? Oh, brother, I remember my bear story. Maybe I told you. I mean, no, I don't like, I like bears, but I don't want to be alone with a bear. I honor bears. I love you, bear, but I don't want to be alone with you. Brother, I remember even in Alaska when we're visiting my brother, and then there was water there, one of the second most uh, runner-up tides that would come. Uh, it, it was the fastest tide except for one in the world, and, and we're going to go check this out. But I had to walk through a strip of land, and at the casing of the Department of Nature, it simply said, beware, bear has been spotted here. <laughs> so for a quarter mile, maybe less than that, I had to walk down this trail, and I just began to sing songs because I heard that I don't like sound they flee from you so i'm making noise well we have a time when we get over yonder how many know what i'm saying <laughs> yes amen and so he's running like brother sylvester in fear Woo! and he comes to a tent now this is my point some, somebody clap your hands, guys. Still want to know you're out there. Praise God. Is this all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, read, brother. Read, yes. Fled away on his feet of the den of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. Amen. House of Heber the Kenite. Go on. And Jael yeah. went out to meet Sisera. Yeah, Jael comes from her tent in the doorway and says, Howdy doody. <laughs> Go ahead. And said unto him, Turn in, my lord. Turn in, my lord. Turn in. To me. To me. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Does she have something up her sleeve? No. The Bible just told us she's neutral. Go ahead. And when he had turned in unto her yeah. into the tent, yeah. she covered him yeah. with a mantle. Two covenants already taken in the east. Number one, you're coming into my house. So upon pain of death, I am to protect you like Lot. It's going to be okay. He's fearing. He's running from Barak. Barak is going to do me in. I've got, amen, help me, help me, ma'am. Ding dong. Come into the house. Oh, whew, sigh of relief. Someone let me in their house. I am protected. She won't tell on me. Everything's okay. This is the Eastern Covenant. That's one covenant. Another covenant, brother, is when somebody takes like a mantle and places it on you. What did it say? Um, gave him something to drink, amen, or turned in and tent, and, excuse me, and she covered him with a mantle. Did you know that the father, the prodigal son, what happened, brother? Amen. When that son came back, it was shoes, sandals. You don't put sandals on a servant's soul. Amen. It was a son who had sandals. Daddy was simply saying, I'm reinstituting you as my son. I'll put a, a signet of authority on you. Bam! You got the power of attorney with the name. And then he put a garment around him that's simply saying, Phew! you've got the family name because the him identifies who that family is. Phew! Part of the family. Come on home. 
And so when she put something on him, brother, that was simply saying, don't worry, sir. I'm going to protect you like you're my son in the house. Two points, covenants, old age covenants, amen, that protected them. You talk about an ADT security system. Nobody's going past this point. Oh. No, well, watch this. Watch this. Go ahead, brother. Come on. Yes, sir. And he said unto her, said, Give me, said, I pray thee, yeah. a little water to drink. A little, little water to drink. For I am thirsty. Who wouldn't be after running, I don't know how many miles? <laughs> Lightning, thunder, bears. Go ahead. And she opened a bottle of milk. Opened a bottle of milk. And gave him drink. Gave him drink. And covered him. Bottle of milk. How many milk drinkers here? Oh, yeah, brother. In the lobby of the hotel. I'm not, I'm not taking disadvantageously. I'm, I'm, I'm helping them out because I'm just using what they have. They don't want their milk to spoil. And so I, 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 I take a couple extra after breakfast and bring it up to the room because I like late night milk and cookies. Studying. Woo! Heaven on earth. And, 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 and I like milk. I like milk. But brother, this is, wasn't your great value, homogenized, pasteurized, amen, milk. Did anybody, no, they didn't have whirlpool refrigerators and frigidaires and, <laughs> would, would you like in the icebox? No, amen, they had to preserve it in hot, deserted places or in the heat of battle. Where? They would put it in some kind of animal skin and they would put the milk or goat's milk in there to preserve it. They would put salt in it. So literally this man was partaking of the highest covenant in the east with her. And she purposely did. You can tell she doesn't have anything up her sleeve. You're welcome here. I'm going to help whoever comes to my door. Amen. Is this all right? Doesn't matter what kind, color, whatever you are. Doesn't matter anything. I'm just going to help you here. And brother, you have it. Open the bottle of milk. And she struck a salt covenant with him. Wow. Go ahead, Brother Reed. I'm trying to get to the point. Somebody say, I'm still with you, preacher. I thank you for your, your, your longevity of uh, help here today. I, I, go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Again, he said unto her, Stand. Stand in, in the door of the door tent. of the tent shall be that if any man doth come and require of thee. Say what, brother? Uh, you went too fast. <laughs> Is there any man here? <laughs> Is there any man here? Such as, if anybody comes such as Barak and says, is there any man here? I want you to say what? No. No. Look at your neighbor and say, no. 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 You're going to say no. Another covenant, as it were. Amen. I want you to stand by the ADT system where the punch pad is, ma'am. And if Barak comes to the door and says, is he here? You're going to say, no. I want you to lie for me. Not only did I say, come on in, Eastern custom, you're protected. Amen. Not only did I put a garment of identity upon you. Not only did I give you the highest soul covenant or covenant in the East. But I also want you to lie for me. Four proofs of protection. This man could never be killed by Barak unless Barak crossed the protocol of those days. Now watch what happens. Is this okay? I've never seen this before. Maybe you have. Preach it with me. Preach it to me. But brother, go ahead. Read on. Thank you, sir. Then J.L., Heber's yeah. wife, took a nail of the tent. J.L. with the nail. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead. And took a an hammer, hammer in her hand. Hammer in her hand. I want you to see the saints. Amen. They did not. Ladies back then are the ones that set up the tents, not the men. They were the house makers, literally, past the two by four. But they knew how to handle a spike and a hammer. And it was in her hand. And go ahead. Walked. And she went softly yeah. unto him. Softly. Tippy toes. Come on. And smote the nail yes. into his temple. Smote the budget to the floor. <laughs> Go ahead. And fastened it unto the ground. Whammo. <laughs> Take that. And he was. Fast asleep and weary. Fast and deeply asleep. Yeah. And weary. Whew. What are you saying, preacher? Wait a minute. How many believe J.L. broke the salt pad? 
You, know, you don't have to raise your hands. I'm just, amen. But how many believe jail? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jail, what's wrong with you? I don't know. Help me save time. Next chapter, there's the song of Deborah. And within the song of Sister Debbie is two verses or so that praise jail for what she's done. Whoa. How could that be? Sounds like an oxymoron, contradiction. How could you praise jail who had a nail that nailed that buzzer to the floor? Here's why. Jail didn't break the salt pack. Sissy Sisera did. Why? How do you know that, Brother Nock? Read on, Brother I'll show you. Is this okay? <laughs> I don't know. This is almost turning into a Wednesday night Bible study, but I, see, I feel Sunday night Holy Ghost right now. Well, yeah. go ahead. And behold, as Barak yeah. pursued Barak, Sisera. Just sure enough, Barak's going to pursue. J.L. came out to meet him. J.L. comes out to meet him too. Oh, how did he do? Go ahead. And said unto him, come. Come on, brother. If I was Barak and knew what was happening on the inside, I'd say, no, that's the house of horror. I'm out of here. Go ahead. And I will show thee the man I'll whom thou show seekest. You. She understands this, baby. I know what you're here for. Amen. So she lets him in. Save covenants apply. You come on in my house, you're protected. There's no promiscuity. There's nothing strange going on. But watch this. Amen. And when she came. And when he came into her tent, who, behold. Who, 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 who's tent? Her tent. Who? Her tent. Her. There's the key. In the east, brother. There was a particular compartment within their tents, which were a house. It's not a little Coleman pup tent, stupid thing. Amen, that falls in the middle of the night because the dew is too heavy. Amen, I'm, I'm, I'm talking tent, tent, Bedouin. It's got different rooms. It's got a pool table over there. Yeah. Amen, brother. <laughs> Sorry, saints, I'm having a good time whether you are or not. Amen. But her tent... Her tent was inviolate to everybody. Nobody could go into her tent, her house tent, her side, her room, without her invitation. Police wouldn't be, even go in there. Nobody would go in there. I'm preaching you this today. I believe that Sisera is dead in the tent with a nail in his temple. Because where do doubts start? Right here. I don't believe the four covenants you gave me, ma'am. I'm searching out for extra security. I'm putting my hand on your personal curtain. No promise to it, nothing. No, no, no. Just me. I'm putting it on your curtain and I'm stepping into your tent because no one, not even Barak, will go in here. I'm looking for the fifth source of protection in your house. And that broke the salt covenant between jail and Sisera, you doubted my salt packed with you, so you are obliged to die. That's why jail went in with the nail. Because it was he who broke the salt pack. You doubted my covenant. You doubted my sustenance. You doubted my ADP system. You doubted the salt that was in the milk. You broke the highest path. You didn't have faith in my salt factor. And brother, I say, and thank you, sir. That's, that's, I think that's, I, 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 I want to say, hallelujah. I want to say, saints, it's impossible in this house, faithful Pentecostals, those that come faithfully to these wonderful pews, those that faithfully pay tithes and love God and you love each other. But is it possible, sir, that one of us, some of us, may have a hand on a curtain and we're fixing to break the highest pact of all because we fear in this day and age in society. Is it possible, brother, that we all of a sudden are going to say, wait a minute, hey man, I don't know if I can trust the Lord. I'm, I'm in his house of protection. I've, I've been covered by the mantle in the name of Jesus in baptism. And I, I've got the salt factor because Calvary is the highest blood covenant that has salt in it that the world has ever seen. We've got the highest covenant in the universe 
You sang it today, the blood, the blood, the blood. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. But for us to walk into places, amen, that say, I don't trust you, Lord, to go into places and venues, amen, that are void of Jesus Christ. Is anybody helping me today? Does anybody? Yes, yes, yes. Come on, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Get your hand off that curtain. Get your hand. Look at your neighbors. Say, get your hand off that curtain. Come on, somebody. Get your hand. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody ought to get on in the aisle and do a little hallelujah. Somebody to say, amen. Hallelujah. It's faith that will fight for me. Have faith in God. Amen. The worlds were framed, framed by faith. I've got faith today. Have faith. In the soul pack, man, I'm here to preach. Calvary in this day and age of covenant breakers and mercy takers, the Calvary is still enough. His blood is still enough. Acts 2.38 is still enough. John 3, 5, and the essentiality of being born again of the water and the spirit is still enough. That holiness is still right and still enough. Hello, get your hand off that curtain. Don't you go to some venue, amen, that's void of victory. Don't you walk down a pathway, amen, that the devil has deceived you in some crazy rabbit trail. Come on, Pentecostals. Amen, I'm here to preach to someone today from my heart. It's time to trust God like you've never trusted him before. Trust him in the house. Trust him with the plan. Trust him with the blood. Come on, God's able to save you through. God's able to bring it to pass. Trust him. I preached for about a half hour just to bring you to that point because I wanted you to see that it's not worth it to break the salt factor for some silly second best substitute somewhere. Some cheap substitute to some little God that's made out of clay that's got eyes that cannot see and feet that cannot walk to you and hands, son, that cannot reach out to you. But somebody's got to make up in the mind to say, I'm staying right here in the house. I'm staying in the, I'm in the arbor and I'm anchored to the rock. I'm staying in the strong and mighty tower that the righteous can run into and be safe. Stay there. Trust God. Hello, somebody, 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 somebody. But brother, the grass is greener over there. No, it's not. The grass is green over and that's, no, it's not. Hello, somebody. God has a plan for you right where you are. God has a plan for you right where you is. Hello, somebody. I have faith in God. Look at your neighbor and say, faith, faith, have faith in God. If you don't have anybody beside you, run to somebody right now. Tell them to have faith in God. Have faith in God. Spin around. Look at you. Have faith in God. Run to somebody on the other side of the street and say, have faith in God. Tell your neighbor, sister, have faith in God. What are you saying, preacher? Let me say it this way. Let me explain it this way. Oh, oh I feel holy. Ghost. Let's, let's just lift your hands in like in tennis. Somebody receive it. Somebody receive it. Somebody. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. God, help me to receive it. Can I, let me, let me just, let me just say it this way, saying, amen. How many remember Joshua is fighting? The battle is fierce. Amen. Gunpowder is a He's whipping upon the kings, the five kings of Makeda. Amen. He's coming against the poisonous gene pools. I'm coming against those that thought they could never be defied. <laughs> Amorites with your child sacrifice and your stupid God told that. <laughs> Amen. You're coming down. Hello, somebody. Joshua, Yahshua is on the rage. Woo! And he comes. And the sun, the sun is going down. I ain't going to finish the battle. So in a rage of faith, simple child like he's a son. Stand still. Boy, I like that. Do you know that there was a time when faith stopped the universe? <laughs> no. Faith stopped the universe. And in the midst of that, there were the men of Joshua who found the five kings of Makeda. Where were they, brother? The five kings of Makeda found 
a cave somewhere. And I thought, well, it's going to be good. Let's go in this cave here. And then we'll go hide a little bit. I mean, they're defeated, brother. They're, it, now, brother, if you just heard top news from your generals, <laughs> your opposition leader just stopped the sun. Yeah, <laughs> where's the cave? And so they five go into a cave. The, ki- the five kings of Makeda are clanking their crowns together saying, what are we going to do? Look at your neighbor and say, what are we going to do? Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. No, some of you don't want to try that. Praise God. <laughs> but brother, what are we going to do? Amen. And the men of Joshua find, brother, they find these five Makeda men. <laughs> and they take stones. And they throw it in front of the cave to bind them in there. What they thought was their hand on the curtain, so-called security, became their grave, their cave, their prison. Because when the rocks came out, Joshua was there, simply put their feet on their necks, hung them as it were, dead on the tree, put them back in the cave, put the same stones. What they thought was security became their prison house. We're in here. And eventually became their grave. What we put our hands to, brethren, what we pull curtains back and what we think is so secure. Amen. On my last day, Pentecostal, I have comfort. Coming out of my nose. Hello, somebody. It's the truth. You barely had any effort to get here. A little deodorant, thank the Lord. Amen. A little bit of Wheaties. Amen. But we had Keurig. (laughs) Everything's secure. Whoa. Didn't even have to feed the horses to get here. I just started the horses up. (laughs) Put those horses in gear and... Trotted right on down the road. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Didn't take anything. Some of us even probably barely prayed, maybe five minutes. Some didn't even come pray at all. It's too inconvenient. <laughs> How many are we? Boy, isn't this an atrocity to walk on thin ice that gets preachers in hot water? What a paradox, especially on the last night. I might become part of a rock pile. <laughs> Anybody hear me? We've got it made in the shade with a glass of lemonade. And we've come, brother. And some of us are still thinking that it's too strong or too tough and it's not worth it. And we'll start putting our hands. You know what drugs are? You know what alcohol is? Seeking for stuff that touches, amen, the endorphins or the chemicals of our mind to give us some kind of physical flip switch high for the fake moment so that we can go back for more cheap substitutes that keep trying to fill the void called Jesus in our lives. Hello, somebody. That's what that is. Oh, alcohol's different. No, alcohol's a drug. I know what I'm talking about. I had two church PowerPoint seminars on alcohol in Green Bay area of Wisconsin because back then, and if not now, Green Bay is the most highest consuming per capita city in the United States. I finally had to put my foot down spiritually and give them lessons on how it's wrong and then to be a sipping saint. <coughs> Hello, somebody. And we seek these cheap substances just too tough. Preacher, I, I can't raise my hand when you want me to. I can't support the pastor. It's against my pride. I, I'm here with, get a grip. Hello, somebody. I'm preaching to myself today. I've got the highest covenant in the world. I've got the best thing on this side of heaven. Brother, forgive me. I said, is this okay? I didn't plan on preaching all of this. Amen. On the last day. Someone used to like me, but maybe not now. <laughs> Amen. But hallelujah. Because I care too much to say, God help us. Get your hand off those curtains. Take them off the curtains. Get the hand off the curtain and say, God, you're enough. The blood's still enough. The salt's still enough. The sanctuary's still enough. Jesus is still enough. God's got this. Yes. Oh, could you clap anyhow? Could you love him? (laughs) 
he said, Capernaum, <coughs> Capernaum, if all of the miracles were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they'd have still been preserved. Jesus, Capernaum was his hometown or his home base for his ministry. Simply, he said, the fire's going to fall. Brother, the sin of yesterday is the sin of today, like in Capernaum. It's to watch Jesus in action. <laughs> miracles after miracles. And never respond to what's taking place. I want to respond in faith. How many want a faith response? It's happening in the house. Brother, time would fail me of the miracles over the last 25 years of evangelism and pastorship and 30 years of ministry to tell you. I know your pastor would fail in time, amen, to tell you of all that you've seen and you've seen and he's seen. Hello, somebody, praise God. This is the church of manna. Saints, I don't know of any other assembly that has had that. I'd get rid of the doctrine that says, seek ye no sigh, pass it on by. I'd say, God, give me him and more of that stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to be hard today. Matter of fact, brother, I got two microphones today. He really wanted me to preach. Praise God. <clears throat> I know. I keep pulling it down. This is my Savior right here. Hallelujah. But what are you preaching, preacher? Take your hand. Pentecostals, if I, if I for the one moment, could, could, could you give me a half hour? Not that I'm asking for that, but if you could give me a half hour, I'd like to teach you a little bit of what we teach in our Red Sky Prophecy Seminars and what's really happening with aliens and artificial intelligence and the convergence of the Antichrist and the fixing, watch the news, to build the third temple and how that in many ways that's not going to be a good thing because an Antichrist is going to sit in that. We are so close to everything that I've been waiting for since 77. Brother, before to find some kind of prophecy was like, okay, there's the fish. I'm going to get it in the barrel. But now there's so many fish. You can't even hit them all. There's so many news cast. Whoa, whoa, brother, I study this almost 24-7. Sometimes i got to push away from the plate and say, God, give me a Dairy Queen or something. i I got to keep my mind free from this stuff. It's happening at lightning speed. You can't afford to let this stuff pass you by. Get your hand off the curtain and trust in God. Can I begin to leave you with some of these scriptures? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Renoily not of thine own understanding. It's not always going to make sense. Hallelujah. But trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine understanding. All thy ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct thy paths. Whew. Hallelujah. Hey, love boat, stay in the ship. Hello, somebody. Stay in love with Jesus. Keep loving him. <coughs> you want me to do what? You want me to do what, Lord? Yes. Yes. The test is on from the same mother that died. Rachel's tomb. Joseph said, no, I don't want to do that. And God simply said, do that for the test. You put the chalice in your brother Benjamin, but he's my full brother. Do it. The test is on. Do you want to know how hard it was for brother Joe to say, brother Benjamin, amen. Without you knowing, I'm going to make you the guilty party. How hard was that to give that command rolling off his lips to Pharaoh's servants, his servants, to do the dastardly deed. He waited with heart-wrenching. He didn't want to hurt Brother Benjamin. He knew it was that the innocency of his little brother was going to be wounded by this transgression of planting something in the sack that would make him guilty. But he did it anyway. He had to trust God for the process. And that's what's tough sometimes, saints, is trusting God for the process that's at hand. All of you are in different levels. Different serving God here and there. Some of you here. Some of you are over here and hurt still. Some of you are here and just trying to survive. Some are here on the mountain of victory. Some over here, everything's okay, but I have no need to go higher. We're all on different, it's thoughts. It's, 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 it's the journey that we're on. 
wherever you are when you're tempted in these last days. And I beg you as a survival kit to a church that Sister Nalak and I dearly love is to simply say this, trust God's process. Benjamin will be all right. Hallelujah. God's going to make him a great tribe and where kings will come and people will rule. Hallelujah. Could you lift your hands unto the Lord? Get your hand off that curtain. Get your hand. You don't have to go in that tent. Get the boshata reboshataka. Hallelujah. Don't be short, Leo. That's it. Lift your hands higher. <laughs> Could you do it? That's it. Somebody reach out. Somebody feel what the preacher's feeling. Hallelujah. 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 I wonder if you could stand your feet and do the same thing. Could you lift your hands everywhere? Could you touch God everywhere? Could you love him everywhere? Have faith in the salt factor. His salt is enough. His salt is enough. His mercy is enduring. Amen. God's got this in your life. God's got the picture. God's got this process. Hallelujah. Talk to him. Somebody talk to him. Somebody talk to him. Praise God. Come on. I want to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. I want somebody to be touched. I want somebody to be blessed. That's it. Some of you are scared out of your shoes because there's a bear that's chasing you. Some of you are almost anxious out of your mind. God, I've got to grasp something or some straws to survive. I'm fixing to have me an anxiety attack. I need something, God. I'm here to tell you, take your hand off that curtain and trust God for the process that's at hand. Don't go into the places that will spiritually kill you, but come to the foot of the tree and reintroduce yourself to the one who's dropped the coins in your hand and invested everything Come to the tree again today. Come to this kitchen lick tree. It smells great. The veil is there. The coins are there. There's a love in the air. God's got this. Saints, could I could I challenge you right now? Could I challenge you right now? to just grab somebody by the hand and say, would you come and pray with me? It might be a spouse, sister, if you could find another sister, brother, if you could, amen, find another brother, if you, so maybe another young person. Come pray, come pray, let's go to the tree. Let's go to the tree. I'm not gonna break the soul pact. I'm not gonna break the soul pact. Come on, could you come pray with me? Could you come pray with me? That's it, yes, yes. Judas, don't get that in the same shop and then walk away. Now, hallelujah. That's it, sister. God's touching you right where you are. That's all right. Right in the pew. Come on, let those tears flow. That's all right. Come on, somebody. That's it. That's it, sisters. Come on, come on. God bless you, brother. Brother, I'm here to tell you that. Come on, there's room at the cross. There's room at the cross. You're praying for one another. He's more than enough.
somebody tell them tell them you're more than enough God the salt is still enough the blood is still enough Calvary is still enough the truth is still enough I don't have to find some cheap substitute I don't have to veer off in the periphery and fall off amen on the edge of the boat come on that's it you that are in the pews that's it God's touching you there God's touching you come on son let him touch you that's it come on brother come on sister he's more than enough we've got time for this Pentecostals come on God's given us convenience and in this hour of convenience God I'm going to turn it into sacrifice I'm going to do whatever I can do and utilize the tools that God has given me come on that's it cry Hosanna save me now come on come on come on come on some of you have the hand on the curtain it's not time to fall out it's not time to run to something that's cheap and substitutional God that's it come on grandma come on mama come on somebody pray like you've never prayed pray like you've never prayed be the protectors come on that's it rise to the occasion rise to the cross rise amen that's it Come on, he's more than enough. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. He loves you so much. Somebody to hold on to the foot of the cross. Somebody weep at the foot of an altar. Come on, that's it. That's it. Make a covenant with Jesus. I'm going to stay in the house. I've got the garment on. I've got shoes for my feet. Hallelujah. It's more than enough. He's more than enough. enough my prayer life amen my relationship with jesus hallelujah it's solid there's joy in the journey god's got this it's revival amen for higher praise hallelujah it's sustenance for higher praise 
God, I'm getting behind my pastor like I've never gotten behind. I'm getting behind my youth leader and I say, what do you want me to do? Here's my hands, here's my feet. Come on, I'm ready. I'm ready. It's by his stripes that I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. second gate I'm not asking you to recall for roses on my chest but does anybody remember the second gate of praise I know it's been about a year but that was the gate that said it didn't matter what he's done for me it was the gate that said I'm going to love him because he's him it's the praise that says Jesus is the Lord of my life. And no matter where you lead me, there I will go. I wonder if we can lift our hands and give him a second gate praise. Say, Jesus, thank you for higher praise, Lord. Thank you for the shepherd and the wonderful sheep that are here. For that which you've invested and constructed. That's it. Somebody feel a release in your spirit that my relationship is a second gate praise relationship with Jesus exactly where I am and exactly where I'm going. Thank you, Jesus. Could you just whisper to Jesus while your hands are still lifted, say, God, you're more than enough. The salt is enough. I took my hand off the curtain this afternoon. The salt, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this place for the, a short confidence that I'm letting Benjamin go. Let Benjamin go. Trust God for the process. The truth is still enough. Brother Clint, thank you. And as you feel, I, I want to turn this to you, my friend. But I wonder, yet another time, I wonder if he might want you to do it a couple more times. But I feel, just, just one more time, say he's enough, he's enough. Lift your hands, say he's enough, he's enough. Amen. To these, to these steps, we're going to pray. I, I just felt that in the Holy Ghost. He's more than enough. He's going to heal us. I believe it. Some of you going to leave. Amen. Painless. Some of you. Going to... I want somebody maybe just behind them or on the sides and the flanks of them that you've been wondering, God. Amen. I feel like I want to go to a different substitute. I've been tempted. I've been tried. I want you to come close to the front. Amen. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God right now. Ministry, could you help me? We're going to pray for these right up front. Praise God. Come on, there's some right here. There's a lined up right here. Amen. There's some right here. God bless you, sir. I appreciate the hunger.
matter report of a doctor. It doesn't matter what anybody has said. In the name of Jesus, God. My God is a healer. Come on, that's it. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. That's it. That's it. He's more than enough. I'm walking away whole. That's it. My faith is done. Amen. Backache, pain, muscles, bones. In the name of Jesus. I'm coming against sugar. I'm coming against God. These things that would keep me down. In the name of Jesus. God, every organ of these bodies. In the name of Jesus. These are the daughters of Zion. Come on, talk to him. Talk to him. God's simply saying you can walk away whole because he's still enough. The blood is still enough. The Holy Ghost is still enough. Calvary is still enough. He bled and died. That's it. That's it, brothers. Pray. That's it, somebody. Come on. That's it. Pray in the periphery. Saints, that's it. Pray where you are. That's it. Young men, pray. That's it. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yehovah Rapha. The Lord that heals is in this house. It's by His stripes that I'm healed. Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. The salt is still enough. Come on. You can trust Him with the salt. Come on, Benjamin. Amen. Trust God in the Benjamin process. Come on. That's it, Jesus. Hallelujah. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's it, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody clap from the back to the front. Somebody clap. Keep clapping. Don't stop clapping. Thank God. That's it, brother. Leap. Leap. That's all right. You can leap. Let's thank God for what he's doing. Let's thank God. Come on. These signs shall follow them. God wants to use this church as a springboard for revival in Covington, Georgia. Hallelujah. Come on. That's it, Jesus. that you feel take it take it into you for the rest of this day as much as you can meditate on this get this into your into your life into your spirit let this be bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh
that lingering, that lingering of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. One more time, why don't we just stretch our hands up toward heaven and, and give you one more opportunity to say that special thing to him. Uh, whatever it is, whatever it may be from your heart, why don't you just whisper that, that sonnet, that poem, that, that love to him. Come on. Let it be from your heart. Jesus, you are the lover of my soul.